Hi folks, welcome to another episode of My 4 Before. Um, today we have uh, Jeep Golden Eagle and I'll just bring in Paul, the owner of said vehicle. G'day Paul, how are you mate? Yeah, good, thank you Gary. Yep, no problems. Okay mate, tell us a bit about it. What is it? 2018 JK Golden Eagle Edition. Uh, V6, 3.6 Pentastar with a five, six, six speed manual. Beautiful, beautiful. Um, okay, well look, well, there's a little bit happening here at the front. Um, talk us through it. Standard bumper by the looks of it, but uh, we've got a few extra bits and pieces. What are they? Yep, that's a, a rugged ridge light bar, and I've fitted uh, uh, some King 7 inch spotlights on there. Uh, they're the Osram uh, LED, uh, and it's also got a 20 inch light bar underneath that I've fitted underneath there as well. Yep, no props, and obviously room for the uh, for the sand flag. Yes. No problems whatsoever. And how do you find these? I know these are the budget option, um, and we're not saying the budget's no good or yada yada yada, because I mean, face it, a lot of us have to purchase what's within our budget, um, but how do you find those when you're driving? Yeah, so far so good. Uh, they've been pretty good. The, the light intensity is quite good. Yeah. And I went with the seven inch to match the uh, similar because you can actually get the larger ones. But uh, I think the sevens, no, they do me well. Yeah, and uh, with Jeeps, because they do tend to run a little hot um, with the airflow that's been blocked, it hasn't uh, hasn't impacted it? I did keep an eye on that. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the temperatures uh, staying within, within spec look pretty good. Yep, no problems. Okie dokie, well there's the front of it, now let's take a quick walk around to the side. Okie dokie, here we are at the side, um, okay let's start wheels and tyres. Okay, so factory it comes with 18s, yep. but I uh, took them off and put 17s on, yep. uh, and got the uh, uh, Cooper Discover AT3, so I like the Cooper tyres, yep, and, and they're a 265. Uh, 70 on a 17. Yep, no problems. They'd be reasonably quiet on the road too, I'd say. Yeah, being an all-terrain. Yeah, yeah, they're, they're quite. They're not a massively aggressive tread. No, but, um, they they do the job quite nicely. Yeah, quite happy with those. Okay, and moving on down here, I see we have the trail rated badge. That's uh, part and parcel of the Golden Eagle package. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, pretty sure it is. Yep. yep. Along with the uh, rock rails. Yep. No uh, comes instead of a side step, you get the uh, the rock rail down the side. Yeah, the fa factory sliders. They're actually. Um, Straight out of the factory, they're actually pretty good. Um, obviously, you can get uh, more intense versions of them, but uh, they'll, they'll protect your underbody, no problems whatsoever. Um, okay, while we're at the side, we talk about suspension. Is it uh, still the standard factory suspension, yes, or have you done an upgrade? No, it has the uh, standard uh, suspension that comes from Jeep at the moment. Yeah. Uh, the car's only got uh, 5,000 Ks on it, and it's still running on a factory suspension. Oh, okay, so it's still a pup. Yes, it is. Still a pup, no problems. Okie dokie. So, what we will do now, we will talk about the roof rack and all of the bits and pieces that you've got up on top of the vehicle. What is it? It's a Rhino rack by the looks? Yeah, Rhino rack with the backbone system, uh, which has got the supporting uh, brace on the inside, yep. uh, which enables you to carry up to about 120 kilos yep. um, dynamic, uh, which is pretty good. And I've got the uh, ARB awning, which got a bit of use this weekend, which was quite good. Uh, happy with that. And I've also got the rooftop bag, which you can put your extra uh, bits and pieces inside there. Yep, no problems at all. A very important niche for people that do no jeeps. We've got fiberglass roof on these because they come off. Um, so they've got all the support brackets underneath so there's not going to be any cracking of the fiberglass. Yeah. So um, that's one of those budget options that you can't really go budget on in a jeep. You really do need quality uh, because that's what protects your vehicle. Okie dokie. So at this point in time, I notice that you also have some lights hanging off here underneath your awning. Yeah, that came with the package, um, with the King's Lights package with the light bar. Um, I took the, uh, the two work lights and put them on the side there yeah. uh, and I can switch them individually uh, depending on which side we've got whatever happening. Um, work lights, camp lights, how they work well. Very good. And are they wired inside or have you got an external switch for them? Uh, I've got a switch sitting inside the cap. Sitting inside the cap. Yeah. No problems at all. Um, okay, you know, we will mosey on around the back and see where all of the magic is happening with the setup inside the vehicle. Okie dokie, well here we are at the back of the vehicle and externally it looks fairly, fairly stock standard, which it obviously is, but if you want to open her up and show us what sort of setup you've got in the back of the camping. Okay. Alrighty. Yeah, yes, and, and yes, we have been away for this weekend <laughs> folks, so it's a little bit cluttered, so you'll have to excuse that, but I'm sure you'll get the idea. Um, alrighty, I see you've got a set of drawers made up. Yeah, the set of drawers that I've got in the back there, they're uh, basically homemade. They're um, basically five pieces of wood that I've screwed together and put a couple of plastic tubs in because uh, I couldn't find a set of drawers that would fit in the back. 
yeah, uh, of yeah. the long wool base. Yeah, no problems whatsoever. Um, but they, uh, they seem to be quite sturdy. They work. So obviously, you know, happy days are here again. And it's not super expensive to set it up. No, no. So they're uh, all locked into the anchor points of the factory anchor points in the bottom. And uh, allows me to uh, have a 40 litre fridge that just fits uh, with a, uh, once again, full drive super center um, fridge slide. Yeah. Um, and that actually works pretty well. You can bring it right out. And you've got full access into the fridge, uh, which works well. Very nice. That locks back in. And allows you to close the door, and it's millimetre perfect just about. Yeah, no, that, that's excellent <laughs> because yeah, they are a little bit restrictive in the back of the long wheel base Jeep. So, no, trust me, we all know I've got a short one. Um, but yeah, no, look, with the setup that you've got here, it's really good. It also gives you the opportunity to pack some space around the side of it. And um, you're not overly crowded, so and everything seems to fit and work quite well. So very, very good. Um, Okie dokie, while we're at the back, we notice the, uh, the Americanized version <laughs> of your UHF antenna sitting at the back. Yes, uh, that's a, an Evo mount. I got that from uh, one of the four drive shops in Wangara. Um, uh, which mounts in onto the factory tyre holder and that's a Kilpatrick antenna that's called uh, an eBay off of a guy who does uh, antenna builds, a radio bloke um, Yeah, no dramas, what's that? That's uh, four and a half? Uh, five. five, he rates it as five Five? Yep And, uh, and work, that works well at the back We'll talk about your comms once we actually get inside the vehicle but with the antenna at the back, do you find that that interrupts anything? Uh, well, it's always ideal you know, to have it higher but um, for going through, you know, off-roading, going through the bush and that, uh, it's very well protected there. Uh, so it's a compromise like everything is. Yeah, yeah very good. Okie dokie. Well, we'll close this up and uh, then we'll take a quick walk around and we'll have a look inside the cockpit. Alrighty, well, here we are in the cockpit. Um, would you like to uh, have a little bit of a chit-chat through? And I guess we'll start from... Uh, Right from your, your handles to get in, in and out of the vehicle. Yeah, uh, these right ones across. are the, uh, the Jeep factory uh, handles that came with the car. Um, but I also saw these uh, Grab Bar USA ones and they are really sturdy. Uh, they are a really good addition to getting you in, yourself in and out of the car. Um, yeah, it sure beats having to grab hold of that steering wheel and, and yeah. yank yourself in and out. Most definitely. Yeah, that's a good addition. Got a dash cam uh, to capture some of the footage. Um, so that's just a suction cup mount on the windscreen and I transfer that between cars, depends what, I, what I've got going on. Uh, got a ram mount sitting here, uh, mounted to the uh, top of the dashboard here. And that's quite a handy, sturdy mount. That's done really well this trip. Uh, no problems at all going through all those uh, wombat holes that we were going through. And there were plenty. <laughs> uh, In-car comms, uh, unit N UHF. Uh, that's got all the uh, controls on the handpiece and it also has got a speaker inside so the main unit sits un underneath the seat uh, hooked up to that antenna on the back and uh, yeah that's been doing all the comm work uh, this trip and I've actually added a, an additional set of USB charging points we always need more charging points um, so I've just got it tucked into the pouch down here and, uh, and that gives me some USB 3 so they're the high current uh, USB charging and some low charging ones, low current charging ones on the other side. So there's additional four USB charging points down there. Yeah, no, very good. And that's uh, everything else is pretty much standard straight out of the factory. Yes. Um, very neat, very tidy, full set of instruments that you've got across the front there. And no, we're not doing a big plug for a Jeep, but um, the instrument panels are really, really comprehensive. I'll give them that. Yes, engine temperature, uh, uh, coolant temperature, all those sort of things. Yeah, and in the uh, in the autos, they've got your transmission temperature and yada yada yada. I don't think they have that in the manual, obviously, because it's a gearbox. Um, but yeah, no, look, they're a really really nice car, um, and it looks to see that you've done it quite well, given the fact that you've not long had it, um, and you've been out camping for three days now. Yeah. Um, and the car actually looks impressively clean and <laughs> impressively tidy. I'm sure you'll get that beaten out of you over the journey <laughs> yes yes that's right <laughs> yeah look no problems at all your car is really really nice so i think what we'll do now is i'm sure the folks have had an opportunity to have a bit of a look around so what we'll do is we will sit down we'll grab a bevy and we'll have a little bit of a chat excellent okay so we've had a bit of a look around your vehicle uh, very impressive but uh, new cars can be very impressive but in such a short space of time you've uh, 
you've done quite well with a few different modifications on. What is your single favourite modification? It would be the, uh, the roof rack system that I put on, the backbone system. Yeah. Um, that would have to be my favourite at this stage. So you can fit all the accessories on the roof, the awning and extra equipment that you want to put on. Yeah, no, ab absolutely. It gives you the uh, the freedom to pack some stuff up on the roof because you are a family man. You've got a wife and a couple of kids, and it, it's always good that, yes, you can get out by yourself or with your young bloke, um, as we have been this weekend, but it also gives you the opportunity to take the entire family out with all of the gear, in which case you'd be quite loaded down. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, no, that that's good. And, and I guess that's something that you didn't sacrifice quality for price on for the Rhino racks, the Rhino racks are top quality. Yes, yep, I went for that one. They actually had a special on. Uh, one of the auto stores had a 20% special on, so yep. I picked it up at a reasonable price. But yeah, it's definitely been a good addition to the car. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so I know the answer to this one because we've been out for three days, but I'm gonna ask it for the guys that are watching here. What are your next one or two mods that you're really looking at getting done? Uh, definitely a suspension upgrade. I think after this trip, yeah, uh, suspension upgrade will de definitely be on the cards. Yeah, you need to lift that pan up a little bit higher. Yeah, yeah. so uh, that was one thing that you did tend to struggle just a little bit with, was uh, with ground clearance. Yes. Um, because you can get that. Um, but look, it, it's one of those things where you can't have everything all at once. You know, we need to, to work through this. We haven't all got a million bucks. Yes. Um, but, uh, uh, and yes, I'm a little bit partial, but the, uh, the old Jeeps, they, they perform pretty well, like, stock out the factory floor they're quite a capable vehicle um you do a few little bits and pieces to them and they, they become almost unstoppable yeah. and i say almost with a smile on my face <laughs> but we'll go into that at a later point in time um okay so again you haven't had the vehicle very long um have you done much four-wheel driving in it um not a hell of a lot actually um uh, the first trip was with you guys on the um on the uh, agarovs yeah um Lancelin trip. Oh, sorry, Lancelin, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Lancelin trip, uh, where I first met you guys. Yeah, yeah so uh, that was its first first trip out, and this is basically its second. Yeah, oh, and that's fair enough too, you've only got 4,000 kilometres on it, so, yes. so it's not like you've been driving it around for too long. Um, so yeah, look, and you're obviously happy with the way it's performed, the majority of the four-wheel driving that you've done so far has been sand. Yes. Um, so you're really happy with the way it's performed? Yes. Yep, get some momentum going, and... Um, just got to work on that ground clearance on those deeper, deeper spots. Yeah, no, absolutely. And look, it, it's one of those things where I guess it doesn't matter how much clearance you've got, you're always going to come across something that you struggle with ground clearance. It's just, it's the nature of the beast. Yes. Um, but uh, as you go, it's all about picking lines. And when in doubt, more right foot. <laughs> <laughs> more right foot fixes most problems. Yes. Um, no, look, that's that's really, really good. I think like it's a good looking vehicle it really is a good looking vehicle um, so you've done yourself very proud um, i would probably like to sit together with you in 12 months after you've been out and you've driven it a fair bit and you've seen some of the harder tracks and you've made a few more of those little tinkery mods and we might take a bit more of a walk around again um, and for those folks that are a regular viewer of our channel you'll notice that this morning there is no beverage um, and I even mentioned while we were at the back of the vehicle that we would have a beverage and have a bit of a chat. But given the fact that it's nine o'clock, um, I probably thought that the bevy's not the way to go. So anyway, look, we'll wind it up there. Thank you very much for bringing your vehicle out with us. Thank you very much for showing the viewers what you've got here. Um, and again, we look forward to doing it all again. Great. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. All right, folks, that takes us out for this episode. See ya. Alright guys, well that was another episode of My 4x4, thank you for watching, um, if you want to see your 4x4 on My 4x4, drop a comment below or contact us by our Facebook page and we'll do a walk around of your rig, alright, see ya.